Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is David Burke and my goal of this recording is to give you a full understanding of what a differential amplifier is and its uses in recording voltages within the human body. So let's begin. Firstly, a look at how electrodes are in communication with the tissues and fluids that surround bioelectric generators would be useful to understand why an amplifier is needed in the first place. As you can see from this diagram, a number of different layers of resistance give skin its high impedance. The purpose of any electrical amplifier is to take a weak electrical signal, denoted here as VH, and increase its amplitude so that it can be more easily processed, recorded, and displayed. Using an electron microscope, we can see the top layer of dead skin cells that provides skin with our high electrical resistances being continually replaced by the living epidermal layer shown in red below. Below that we can see the dermis with a single sweat gland colored in blue. For the purpose of establishing electrical contact with the skin, sweat can be regarded as a, as a weak saline solution of concentration varying between 0.1 and 0.6%. This layer of dead skin cells and secretion give unprepared skin a high electrical resistance which weakens the signal detected by the electrodes. It follows that a differential amplifier must have a high input impedance to maximize the signal detected. Human skin is a little different to other animals, as seen with this electron microscope of shark scales, which to me proves that just about everything about a shark is scary and they should be stayed away from. <laughs> the surface of a shark skin contains the dermal teeth that are used to reduce drag when swimming and give the skin of a shark a sandpaper-like feel. This provides a different impedance to our own skins, which would be useful to know for sh Shark's ECG if you're brave enough to attempt one. Another more important issue with placing electrodes on the skin surface are the high levels of noise recorded, which can wholly distort a signal of interest. This is particularly relevant to bioelectrical, me bioelectrical measurements which aim to detect minute voltages. This is where the differential amplifier takes center stage. As suggested by its name, a differential amplifier more specifically amplifies the differences between potentials. Neatly illustrated here by David Holder's diagram, we can see how a signal with a difference from a reference electrode of 50 microvolts is amplified to 500,000 microvolts. The two signals which are the same are left unamplified. This is pretty much the essence of differential amplification. Why is this useful, you might ask? Well, this type of amplification has the great advantage of being able to reduce the horrendous signal distorting noise present on a, on a measurement. By having a reference electrode with identical noise, subtracting the signals produced from each other gives an accurate picture of the signal of interest, which is subsequently amplified to become more visible. This technique can be used in a variety of, of different electrical measurements, including ECG, EEG and EEMG. That's my bicep, by the way. So how does it do this? Well, we can quantify the amount of noise rejected from a signal through the differential amplifier's common mode rejection. In an ideal case, the situation is rather simple. You have two input voltages, V plus and V minus, and you take the difference and amplify it by the differential gain, shown here as AD. This gives you the voltage difference amplified and ready to be used. In reality, however, an addition to this equation is necessary. The ideal model predicts that the common mode gain, denoted here as ACM, has zero effect. In reality, this is not easily attainable. To account for the common mode gain, the average of the input voltages is amplified by ACM. ACM is typically much lower than the differential gain of AD, and comparing these values gives rise to what we term as the common mode rejection ratio, or CMRR for short. CMRR is the ratio between differential gain and common mode gain, and its measure and it is a measure of a differential amplifier's ability to reject noise. Typical ratio values are usually higher 
are usually rather high, as high values, say around 3000, are desirable in recording instruments. The CMRR is often converted into decibels for ease of use, so a ratio of 3000 would come to about 70 decibels. To illustrate what a good common noise rejection ratio can do, we can take an important signal, say my voice, and apply some noise. I'm pretty sure you're having trouble hearing me. My voice is lost in all the noise and cannot be studied and recorded. The only way you can hear me is if this, is, this noise is reduced. So, with the help of a uh, <laughs> With the help of a reference signal, which in this case would also be playing Elvis, a high CMRR can be established to reduce noise and make an important signal clearer. Thank you for listening and I hope you enjoy my presentation.